Hi everyone, this is Intro Stats with Matt Tu Show, and today we're looking at calculating one population confidence intervals for proportion and for mean uh, using statistics software, using technology. So in our last couple videos we've been going over the formulas and how these confidence intervals are calculated. Now we're going to get into using software to calculate them. Again, this is much more efficient. Uh, again, we don't want to be calculating things by hand. We want the computers to do the calculation for us. And we spend our time working on understanding them and being able to explain. So let's get started. On the calculating one population proportion confidence interval video, I looked at a sample of COC students from the Canning Country campus and we were looking at what percentage of Canning Country stat students smoke. So the, the sample data was 108 total and four of them smoke cigarettes. So if I want to make the confidence interval, kind of the same one that we did by hand in, the, one of the, in that video, uh, I would just go to statistics and confidence interval. Statcato actually has a great menu. I love the way their menus are set up. If you're looking for a confidence interval, you just go to the statistics menu and you go straight to confidence interval. Now this was a confidence interval for a proportion. So I'm going to go one population proportion, just like that. Statistics, confidence intervals, one population proportion. Just click on that. And of course, we could have the raw data. If you have the raw data, categorical data, you could put it in this column. But I actually have summary counts, so I'm going to go ahead and click summary data. The number of events is also called the number of successes, um, and that was how many people had that characteristic. So in this case, there was four smokers. Number of trials is your sample size. A lot, some computer programs would say sample size there. How many people were total were in your data set? In our case, there was 108. Now we used a, we used a 90% confidence level when we did that calculation uh, on the video. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 90%. So see how it matches up. So it's really straightforward. Just put in the confidence level you want, put in the number of successes out of the total, and push OK. Now notice there we go. We got all the printout. We have the sample proportion, 0 0.037. We got our margin of error, 0 0.030. And we got the 90% uh, confidence interval. The lower limit is right here, 0 0.0071. And the upper limit is right here, 0 .00, I'm sorry, 0 0.0669, which is actually very close to what we, did, we got when we um, calculated this. Now, if you look on here, this is interesting. The computer gave us a warning message. I love when computer programs do this. So it says, warning, the sample size is too small for normal approximation to be valid. Remember, this is based on a normal approximation, right? They're, they're the z-score that was used in the calculation, the standard error, those all all tied to uh, a standard normal curve and a normal sampling distribution. But our sample size actually was too small. 108 was not enough. Because remember, for categorical data, we needed four, at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. I only had four people that smoked. I needed at least 10 that smoke and at least 10 that don't smoke. So that's why the computer is telling you this is not very accurate because your sample size was too small. You did not have 10 successes and 10 failures. So what do we do in that case? Well, uh, that means the formula approach is not very accurate in this case, which means we may want to move to a bootstrap. So I'm going to go over now to stat key, and we're going to go to stat key here. Here's stat key, and we're going to go to bootstrap confidence intervals. Now, again, if you haven't watched the bootstrap uh, introduction to bootstrap confidence intervals, um, with uh, Patty Fraser Locke. It's great. It's fabulous. I always have my students watch it. It's a great introduction to the idea of bootstrapping and how it works and why does it work. Um, and um, the, um, the main idea though is a bootstrap is taking it's almost like a simulated sampling distribution in some ways. You're, you're taking random samples from one original random sample. That's what we call bootstrapping. So in the bootstrap you just click on confidence interval for single proportion 
And since we'll be calculating the middle 90% directly, it doesn't have to necessarily be a normal sampling distribution. It do, this doesn't have to look normal. It doesn't have to match up with a z-score. It doesn't have to match up with a normal curve for it to, for it to work. So what I'm going to do is push edit data and I'm going to put in my count which was four. This is actually a prime example of when you would use bootstrapping. Usually if you have 10 successes and 10 failures we use the standard formula approach. Okay, there's my sample proportion right there, 0 0.037. There's my 4 out of 108. Now what this is going to do now is it's going to take random samples from this one original random sample with replacement. So it takes a, a person from the data, notes if they smoke or not, and then puts the person back in the data before it picks the next person. That's what we mean by with replacement. All right. So again, just like when we did sampling distributions, you want to generate a thousand samples a bunch of times. Notice how this looks very skewed right. That's because we did not have 10 successes and 10 failures. We only had four successes. That's why this doesn't look very normal. It's also why StatKeto gave us a warning message that this data doesn't match up with the normal curve and normal approximation approaches but we can still calculate the 90% confidence interval. Just click two tail and we're going to put 0 .00, 0.90 in the middle. And there we go. Huh? Pretty cool. It actually calculated the middle 90% 90, 90 directly instead of having to deal with a formula that's trying to approximate this. So uh, this is great. So now we got a little bit different numbers than what StatCato gave us or what the formula gave us on the previous video. So we got, uh, com not, we're 90% confident that the percentage of COC st uh, stat students at Canyon Country that smoke is between 0.93% and 6.5%. So remember in a bootstrap, this is the lower limit. This is where 0.0093 or 0.93% and this would be the upper limit. This number right here, the proportion in the middle, that is the actual confidence level. Okay, so you just put in the confidence level here and the two numbers at the bottom is your confidence interval. It's really kind of cool. All right, now what about for means? So in our, in our one pop, calculating one population mean video, um, we uh, looked at a random sample of 50 P adults uh, and their body temperatures. So I have the data right here. Uh, and again, if I want to make a confidence interval, and again, StatCato really does use the traditional formula. So when you get a, when you get a calculation in StatCato, you're getting the traditional formula approach. So I'm going to go statistics, confidence interval, one population mean. Again, very easy to find. Statistics, confidence interval, one population mean. I'm going to click on that. Now notice it has either you can have the summary data, so I could type in the summary data if I knew the sample size. For example, it was 50. Sample mean I think was 98.26. Standard deviation of 0.765. You could type those three numbers in and you'd get about the same answer. But since I have the actual data, I'm just going to tell the computer to use the actual column of data. In StatCato, column 1 is denoted as C1. So you just type C1 for telling the computer that my data is in column 1. Again, uh, right here, population standard deviation, known or unknown, leave it as unknown. I don't know what the population standard deviation is. By the way, if you, if you want to know what this would do, if you did know the population standard deviation, the computer would actually use a z-score instead of a t-score. So in a lot of ways, this is telling the computer to use either a z-score or a t-score. We usually prefer to use the t-score for mean. So just leave this as unknown. And then I'm going to use uh, what cover confidence level I want. I think in the, in the calculating one population mean confidence interval video, we did this example with 95%. So I'm going to leave it as 95%, 0.95. All I do is just push OK. And there we go. If you notice, these are almost exactly the same numbers we got when we calculated it in the video. So there's our sample mean, standard deviation, sample size. There's our margin of error, 0 0.218. I think we got 0.217 in the video. Well, that was a little rounding error on our part. Uh, so, and then we got, here's our, here's our confidence interval, very close to what we got when we calculated it by hand. 
So we're 95% confident that um, uh, the population mean average body temperature is between 98.0425 and 98.4775. Now remember, when is this formula ac accurate? Stat Cato here, this is using the traditional formula. It's only accurate if it's random, independent, and 30 or normal. Our sample size is 30, is above 30, it's 50. But what if you want to check a uh, shape? Easy way, go to graph and histogram. Kind of what we've done in the past. If you click show legend, it'll put a title on the graph. And it says this is a small data set, I don't want too many bars. I think I'm going to go to three, especially it's such a tiny data set. And there we go. So it's not by any means perfectly normal, but it is in the ballpark of normal. The highest bar is in the middle. Sometimes we might refer to this as nearly normal. It's definitely not, not radically skewed. So I think this is going to be okay. This is actually pretty accurate. So unlike the proportion example, the mean average example is pretty accurate here. So let's see if we wanted to do this with bootstrapping, what would it come out to be? So let's go back to stat key now and look at bootstrapping. So remember, bootstrapping is creating the confidence interval without a formula. So if I go back to stat key, now we're going to go confidence interval for single mean, median and standard deviation. So this is confidence interval for single mean right here. And this, this uh, temperature data I'm using is actually one of the preset data sets that are in Stacky, body temp 50. It's right here under, under these uh, data sets that are built in. Stacky, by the way, has a lot of great data sets that are built in um, that are great for showing the class this kind of stuff. So here's the body temperature. Here's the, here's the data here. So there's my random sample of 50, my sample mean, and now again, what the computer's going to do in a bootstrap is it's going to take thousands of random samples from the sample with replacement. So it's going to pick a number out of this data, this original sample data, and then it's going to put it back before it picks the next number. So you can get the same number picked multiple times. So again, when you're generating any kind of sampling distribution or bootstrap distribution, click the thousand samples a bunch of times. All right, and we're creating a bootstrap.